Hello everyone. How are you all doing today? Loved, protected, and safe I hope. Tonight we are going over more scriptures. The first is John 12, 46. I have come as light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me would not remain in darkness. Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior came into this world not to condemn everyone in it to eternal damnation in hell, but to be the path of eternal life in their kingdom shall they believe in them. John 12:44 through 50 Jesus cried out, The one who believes in me, not in me, but in him who sent me, and the one who sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me would not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and doesn't keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and doesn't receive my sayings has this as his judge. The word I have spoken will judge them on the last day, for I have not spoken on my own. But the Father himself, who sent me, has given me the command to say everything I have said. I, I know that his command is eternal life. So the things that I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. To believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is to believe in God, for they are one. Jesus Christ's words he spoke were not of his own, but from God to show everyone the way to their kingdom with eternal life. The words are their commands, laws, ways, words, and truth. They must be strictly adhered to in order to enter the narrow gate. Yes, you will sin from time to time, but repent of them as soon as you realize your transgressions and you shall be forgiven. Ask to be put back onto the path of their righteousness and it will be so. Those who do not follow these will have their end in this life alone and eternal damnation. John 3.17 For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God so loves us that he sent Jesus Christ to teach us the way to them in their kingdom to die for our transgressions against them so that we might be saved through them. He was not sent to condemn us of our sins. Rather, he was sent to guide us out of them to save us from them, whereby giving us the chance to reach eternal life in their kingdom. John 15:19. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. However, because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of it, the world hates you. Those who have been saved by them, chosen and anointed by them to be their servants, are despised by this world. The reason for this is this world is of Satan's sinning ways, and you are walking against them and their ways. This is especially true to those who have been chosen and anointed to spread the gospel, prophesy, and be servants of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. John 17:6 through 26 I have revealed your name to the people you gave me from the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, because I have given them the words you gave me. They have received them and have known for certain that I came from you. They have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, because they are yours. Everything I have is yours, and everything you have is mine, and I am glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I was protecting them by your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them is lost except the son of destruction so that the scripture may be fulfilled. Now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy completed in them. I have given them your word. The world hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I am not praying that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. I sanctify myself for them so that they may be sanctified by the truth. 
I pray not only for these, but also for those who believe in me through their word. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe you sent me. I have given them the glory that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me, so that they may be made completely one. That the world may know you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am, so that they will see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the world's foundation. Righteous Father, the world has not known you, however I have known you, and they have known that you sent me. I made your name known to them and I will continue to make it known, so that the love you have loved me with may be with them and I may be in them. Jesus Christ prayed to our Father for all who are chosen and anointed to be their servants, to be given that which God gave him, to be protected with everlasting life in their kingdom. Not only did he pray for this, for those who serve them, but also who come to them, who live by their commands, laws, ways, words, and truth. Mark 16, 1-20 When the Sabbath, Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they could go and anoint him. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb at sunrise. They were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone from the entrance to the tomb for us? Look up. Look, oh, sorry. Looking up, they noticed that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. They were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he told them. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they put him, but go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you. They went out and ran from the tomb because trembling and astonishment overwhelmed them. And they said nothing to anyone since they were afraid. Some of the earliest MSS conclude with 16.8, which reads, Early on the first day of the week, after he had risen, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and reported to those who had been with him, as they were mourning and weeping. Yet, when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe it. After this, he appeared in a different form to two of them walking on their way in the country. And they went and reported it to the rest, who did not believe them either. Later he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table. He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who saw him after he had risen. Then he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes. If they should drink anything deadly, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. So the Lord Jesus, after speaking to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down on the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the accompanying signs. After Jesus Christ was raised from death, then reborn in the Spirit, he commanded his disciples to go out into the entire world to spread the gospel of God and himself. They performed great miracles just as he did, driving out demons, healing the sick, being kept from death until the appointed time from God. Just as they have done these, so have I. These are all recorded in the book God Had Me Write on Spiritual Warfare. There have been many attempts on my life, including poisoning attempts that were never prospered as God blocked them from ending me and my son. This is not the life I chose, but it is the life I was chosen for by God, and I have humbly accepted this. Today my father had me go to McChesney Park Post Office. I arrived too late, though, as they had already closed. However, God directed me to a man inside and told me to pray for him, so I asked. 
he humbly accepted this, so I asked him if there was anything in particular he would like me to pray for him. He asked me to pray for his grandson, who was nine years old. His parents are not in God, and his son has been led astray by his wife's unbelief. I prayed for him, his grandson, and all of his loved ones to be delivered to salvation. After this, we talked for 20 minutes about this world's unbelief. I explained to him that everyone is born in sin. To believe in God and Jesus Christ to have eternal life is a hard road. This is due to everyone wanting what they want, knowing that if they truly follow them, they cannot have this. That people use parts of their words to suit them when they want it, and deny their words when it goes against what they want. He thanked me for living the hard path for their kingdom, for his children. I showed him the books God had me write, then I told him I would send them to him for free. He declined this offer, telling me he wants to buy them to support me. I, told, I then told him that I do not do this for money, but for God's children. God told me what to charge for them both, but I always offer them freely to those who God directs me to. I thanked him for allowing me to pray for him and his family, then he backed to me. We hugged, then we went our ways. Remember, God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the angels and I love you all without question or reservation. May God's love, peace, grace, blessings, joy, mercy, understanding, compassion, caring, kindness, patience, wisdom, protection, guidance, glory, goodness, corrections, truth, trust, forgiveness, salvation, steadfastness, faithfulness, strength, endurance, clarity, courage, and everything good of them be with you, always guiding you through. Have a blessed day in God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I love you all, and I'll see you later.